Let us look at question number 29 from set 1, Civil Engineering, Gate 2021. A wedge M and a block N are subjected to forces P and Q as shown in the figure. If force P is sufficiently large, then the block N can be raised. The weights of the block and the wedge are negligible compared to the forces P and Q. The coefficient of friction along the inclined surface between the wedge and the block is 0 0.2. All other surfaces are frictionless and the wedge angle is 30 degrees. The limiting force P in terms of Q required for impending motion of block N to just move it in the upward direction is given as P is equal to alpha Q. The value of the coefficient alpha rounded off to the first decimal place is asked and the options are given here. Students are encouraged to watch this NPTEL lecture cited below where block and wedge problems are handled in more detail. However, we will be looking at some fundamentals as we go on to solve this problem. Let us look at some fundamentals pertaining to wedge and the concept of self-locking. Wedges are basically used to level large weights and to lift large weights by employing friction to our advantage. An extension of these are also found in square threaded screws used in machines for lifting weights. If we were to consider a block and a wedge as shown, the lifting operation can be carried out by applying an inward force to the wedge in order to lift the weight and this external stimulus is required to be applied to the wedge for lifting throughout the process and we can see from this animation how the wedge moves inward and the weight gets lifted upwards. Another application of this concept deals with self-locking where the wedges tend to move outward but the friction prevents it thereby achieving a locking condition. It should be noted that in the case of self-locking, no external force is required to be applied to the wedge and it gets locked solely by virtue of friction as it can be seen from this diagram where the frictional force gets mobilized as the wedge tries to move towards the right. With this background, let us try to solve the problem at hand. If we were to draw the free body diagram of the block N and wedge M, we can see that the angle of the wedge is given to be 30 degrees. And let this wedge and block assembly be present in the XY axis. We can see that P and Q are applied as shown. Now there will be normal forces from surface 1 and surface 3 as shown. And let us consider the friction directions to be as shown. Since P is applied on to wedge M pointing in the negative X direction, it is reasonable to assume the frictional forces would get mobilized in order to oppose this motion and the direction of F1 can be considered as shown. Similarly, this operation would tend to lift the block N wherein it would move upwards and it is only reasonable to assume the direction of friction F2 to oppose this motion as shown. Now if we were to consider surface 2, there would be a normal force, let us call this N3 applied from block N to wedge M and vice versa and let us consider friction to be F3 pointed in the direction shown which is opposing the motion of the wedge. From Newton's third law, we can see that an equal and opposite F3 would be applied onto the block. N. Now it is to be noted that in the problem motion is impending on all the surfaces. Hence frictional forces can be trivially replaced with the coefficient of friction times the surface normal forces as shown here. It is further given in the question that surface 1 and surface 3 are frictionless and the coefficient of friction at surface 2 is given to be 0 0.2. Hence we can replace mu n2 and mu n1 to be 0. Now if we were to consider the wedge M and apply the equilibrium condition sigma fx equaling 0, we can see that this would give us n3 sin 30 plus mu n3 cos 30 minus p equaling 0 and we can solve this to get n3 equaling p divided by sin 30 plus 0.2 cos 30. Next let us consider the free body diagram of block N and let us write the equilibrium equation sigma Fy equaling 0 from which we can see N3 cos 30 minus mu N3 sin 30 minus Q equals 0 and we can solve for Q from this equation which comes out to be N3 into cos 30 minus mu sin 30. Now if we replace N3 with this expression above we can see that Q equals P into this ratio and in our question P is given in terms of Q. So we reframe it and we can see that this expression inside the box bracket basically represents alpha. If we were to simplify this expression, we would get P equaling 0.88Q. Hence, our alpha is 0.88. However, in the options, we can see that the nearest value to 0.88 is 0.9. Hence, we can see that alpha is 0.9 for this problem. And the correct option is 
ऑप्शन डी थैंक यू